Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to fantasy world building. So, first things first. Eh, hear him? Yes. We have another villager. Just over here. Um... I think the easiest thing is going to be to get him out in a boat and, and boat him over there. This is um this is right near where the, the dungeons we Oops. Dungeons we uh fought, conquered, dealt with. Over there. I heard him when I was standing over here doing something. Just after the episode. I think... I don't think this should be too terribly difficult. Then again, we are talking about a villager here, so... You know... Let's not, not be... Ooh. Let's not be... Too overconfident. But that should work. And then we should just be able to drive off the edge, right? Actually. Something like that. Well, I think that'll work. We're gonna find out, but while we're doing this, um, let's get him in here first. Actually, also, I'm taking this, I, I realized actually some time ago that um, actually we don't have a bed down here. If we were going to respawn, we would respawn all the way back at the surface, which would be not very fun. So I think take this. I don't see why this shouldn't work. But yes. So, while we're doing this, first things first. Mushrooms. Oops. That was shockingly painless. Yes, mushrooms. We talked quite a bit last episode about mushrooms going to be a um uh wood substitute. Yes. Well, I've done well actually I've done a bit of research. And as it turns out, uh, and as it turns out, um, making things using mushrooms is actually a thing, or more specifically, mycelium. So I think I think I think the first thing we should we should kind of quickly go through is basically the basics of mushrooms. Just just. Mushrooms 101. First of all, mushroom, the term, is not a technical term. It's, um... Yeah, it's not going to work. But basically, a mushroom is the fruiting body of a fungus, right? Maybe if we could get a run up. Eh? It's not going to work. Dang it. Okay, well. It's the fruiting butt body of a, a fungus, which basically means that... So it's sort of like a, a fungus's version of a flower, or... 
Well, a flat, both a flower and a fruit, sort of. It's not, not, not perfectly analogous, but it it, it works. So basically, th this part above ground is not actually the majority of the fungus. The majority of it is underground, and that is the mycelium. My boat disappeared. Right, right, what, right. And mycelium. Well, I mean, we have we have the block, the block in in Minecraft. This is not really a super great representation of what mycelium actually looks like. Basically, mycelium is the underground, well, mostly underground, although not necessarily underground, main main portion of of a fungus. It's it's the main growing growing and spreading part of a fungus. It's 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 the fungus's actual main body, in a similar way to the way that the branches, trunk, and roots of a plant are all the main body of the plant. But with the fungus, it's kind of all, all one, one sort of mass. And the, the individual strands in the mycelium, those are called hyphae. That's actually, if you, if you played the, the, uh, 116 version of Minecraft, and, and, you know, 116 and onward, you know, um, it's actually, it's, that's, that's where they got the name for the, um, crimson and warped um fungus the stems of the tree like things that's why they they're called hyphae because that's a single strand of a fungus that is that that is a hyphae basically more or less it, it, it's it's a little it's it's fairly more complicated than that but that's sort of the basics you've got you've got individual strands called hyphae of a fungus, and a whole mess of them together is called the mycelium. The mycelium, when conditions are correct, or incorrect, I guess, when, when it feels the need to, it will produce a mushroom. Ooh. Well, that's cool. Um, and the mushroom is the fruiting body. It's, it's basically the, um, the part of the fungus that produces spores. So this here, it's not a good example. Okay, there we go. This here would be the the fruiting body of the fungus. And underneath, underneath the cap, this is the cap and the stem there, that there. And then underneath that are the gills that are basically just Many, many ribs of tissue filled with fungus spores. Now, I'm not, I'm, that's, that's a very brief overview of the way your typical fungus or typical mushroom fungus operates. Something that looks like this. There are many 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 types of fungus and and not all of them have mushrooms and mushroom is not a technical term because it actually gets fairly complicated but that's a sort of brief or overview ish now i didn't bring the bummer hold on i was saying about how well i went through a whole lot of different ideas for how I thought mushrooms could be used, mushroom blocks could be made into basically a wood substitute. What I was not aware of is the fact that actually there are actual real-life methods whereby you can use 
a fungus as a building material. There are, I, I've done a fair bit of research and there are several companies that are actually doing this. And they're making things like packaging and, and building materials and like leather substitutes, which is interesting. And that's, it's all, all quite interesting. The very basics of it are actually not the mushrooms, though. Basically, here's, here's, here's a sort of brief rundown of how it works. You take the mycelium, the actual mycelium of the fungus. You combine it with water and a food source, something that the, the fungus will actually eat. The, the, one of the companies I was looking into actually sells uh, grow-it-yourself kits, basically. And they have you use flour as the food source. But, I, theoretically, I think you could use all kinds of things. I know they, that some of them use all sorts of agricultural byproducts waste plant materials that you don't really have any other use for other than composting so with that you you that you t add all of that together with with the actual mycelium and you do this all in a sterile container of some sort basically you you, you want it to grow the fungus you want and not some other random fungus that happens to be floating around in the air because there are lots of random funguses floating around in the air all the time it it wouldn't really do if you if you were trying to make like packaging for a product and you got bread mold in there or something so you do all of this in a in a mostly sealed container you need to let air in but mostly sealed you let the mycelium grow into the food and basically wait for it to essentially take over. Oh, that's not good. Oh, dang it. Okay, well, there goes that. And then from there, you let it reach a certain point, and then you take it out of, of the sealed container. You break all of the mycelium up, and then you at, and then you take all of that broken up mycelium, you add some extra food, and you put it into a mold of whatever it is you're trying to grow. Say you want a little cup or pot, you would you would add it all to a mold of a cup or pot, and then you let it grow for a few days more, and then, well, you take it out of the mold. From there, basically, you you desiccate it. You remove all of the water. You can do that either through an oven or just letting it air dry until all of the water is removed. And then, at that point, well, you've got a mycelium grown object from your mold. And because you've let you've desiccated it, Especially, especially in an oven. If you if you bake it in an oven, it essentially kills the mycelium, so that it won't, it doesn't keep growing, or do anything unexpected. But even air drying it, it it will turn it um, inert basically, so that again it doesn't keep growing. You you basically you don't want your packaging or whatever it is to carry on growing after you've made it. But that's that's the sort of basic basic gist of how the process works uh, there I couldn't find a huge amount of information about all of the variants all of the different variations uh, I couldn't actually find anything on what kind of fungus they use but eh, that's that's the basic gist of it so now to our purposes what we're doing here you know what? Actually, let's just actually let's just take a look at the recipe that I put together. Hold on a second. Let's actually see. There's actually there's there's two recipes I I did. Here's one. <sighs> I 
I did the wrong clay bucket. Uh, where do we put our iron buckets? Really should have checked that. There, there are there are two different clay buckets, two different mods that add a clay bucket, and one of the this one, this particular one, the ceramics one, is actually more versatile. As far as I can tell, the other one doesn't let you pick up anything that isn't water, and um, yeah, I I definitely should have checked before before just doing it. Here we go. So, here's one recipe. I'm, I don't actually want to put that down. I'm not sure if you can get it back. And this here is the other recipe. Now, before we actually talk about these recipes, there is one other thing with it that we need to talk about. And that is these. These mushroom stem blocks. So, I did, I did a whole bunch of messing around trying to get these blocks, basically. So, first things first, Minecraft mushrooms. Let's go through the basics of Minecraft mushrooms, as distinct from real life mushrooms. Well, basically, take a look right over here, this text. Minecraft mushroom brown mushroom block variant northwest variant center variant stem variant north variant west you see these things have a different block variant for for each each of these each of these different well variants like you've got you've got each one being, well, not each one, not quite each one, but many of these are slightly different. This one has this brown texture on the top, on this side, but not on the other sides. This one has it basically the same as that, except this face also has the brown texture. And you can see the inside there is different. Now the way it works basically is the block itself has a metadata that tells it which variant it is. These, these are brown mushrooms. Brown mushroom blocks. Same for the red ones. The, the, the whole, the whole entire structure is made of Minecraft brown underscore mushroom underscore block. That's, that's the whole thing. Now, wool also works in the same way. It's the same block, just with a different metadata attached to it. But if you notice, these all have on the number a, a, it, it's the same number for each one of these, but with a slash and then another number. These do not have that slash. As far as I can tell, in this version of Minecraft 1.12, the way these things are coded to work means that if you give yourself this specific variant of the brown mushroom block with this specific metadata, I, I don't remember what the number is off the top of my head, Basically, it will give it to you in your inventory, and you have to use a slash give command to actually acquire this in your inventory. And it will be one of these, a, a missing texture block, but as soon as you place it, it will be one of these. I went through quite a bit to even figure out how to give this specific block to you, to the player, to have it as an actual item, but it doesn't matter which one, which metadata you give yourself, which of these specific blocks you give yourself, they all end up like this when you actually place them in the world. So. Functionally, that means that we couldn't 
I cannot add a recipe for them, is what that means. Because even even if even if I did add a recipe for the stem blocks like I wanted to, it would be it would be a broken texture item or a missing texture item in your inventory. And as soon as you place it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're in creative, it doesn't matter if you're in survival, as soon as you place that, it will revert to the brown just all brown block. Brown on all sides. So, I, from there, I kind of went on a bit of a wild goose chase, trying to find some way to force it to work, or anything. I also went and looked for a mod that adds that, and yes, there are mods that add that for future versions of Minecraft. And I think there was one or two for a past version of Minecraft, but nothing for 1.12. I did find this mod, which is, it's interesting. It's got some interesting things to it, but, but all of these, well, not quite all of them, but the vast majority of all these mushrooms are just a food item. It doesn't seem to have any automatic compatibility with Pam's Harvest Craft either, so all of these are the same, that's the lowest the lowest amount of food that you get from something. Some of them, some of them are placeable, but many of them are not. It's got some interesting things. These, these are kind of cool, but it also has these, and this is why I actually kept the mod. I was, I was tempted to just kind, just get rid of it after looking at it, because I, the, the version of this mod for 1.12 is apparently quite a bit more limited than the versions for more more recent versions of Minecraft. Like, it's really hard to tell on the actual site what is... what of what of the things that are being shown are actually in what versions. So what was being shown looked like it might have have some way of getting the actual stems but apparently not it does have these and this is why i kept the mod because they kind of sort of resemble the stems like okay that just ate all of my bone meal really all right well Use your imagination, there's a stem there. It kind of resembles it, the texture is very similar, it's darker. But it's also not really what I wanted for this purpose. Because basically, the way, I, the way I'm intending this, the way I made this recipe, is the idea being, you've got the water, You've got the cave roots as a source of food for the fungus. And then you've got basically a, a, a bunch of spores all together in a block form. And so that would give you, you know, just... Oh, we're out of water, right. Well, that would, that would give you a, my, a mycelium block, basically. A, a grown mycelium block. Uh, there's no particular way I can think of to indicate the time it takes to grow, which is over a week at least, and that's when you're starting out with mycelium, so that's not from spores. I would assume if you start with spores it's going to take quite a bit longer, but I have no no real way to make it take time, at least as not, not as far as I can tell. I don't know, there might be some modded crafting system that we could use, but eh, I, I feel like it makes sense enough, more or less anyway. But just to go back to the stems real quick is, basically I had made that recipe and then discovered this. 
the baffle cap stems. They're, they're from roots, actually. And that, that texture, that's, that's actually the, the mushroom stem texture that we've wanted this whole time. With, with the texture on all sides. This is exactly what we want. It's, it's a different mushroom, but it's something I can actually add a recipe for. It's the same texture. It's, we can actually use it. So that was, that was vaguely irritating. I'm not going to lie. It's, um, it, yeah. So I, we might keep this. I, it, it's, you can't, you can't place these like, they're not like logs. They only place like that. So, I don't know. Do they? I don't actually know. Hmm. Nope, they just poofed to these. Yeah. Need sick self-touch for those, I guess. Either way, there's 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 what we were looking for. Yay! It's um I <laughs> really wish I had noticed these before going on the whole wild goose chase and getting really frustrated with and, and trying so hard to get these things to where we could actually use the regular mushroom brown and red mushroom stems. But, well, we found it now, so at least there's that. Eventually. Now, going back to this recipe. No, not this one. Um, one thing I am thinking is that instead of because because basically the way you do it is you you are essentially taking mycelium to grow more mycelium you know it's it's sort i would sort of think of it like taking a root plant or a cutting from a plant and getting it to grow further from there sort of like that so you're basically getting it to propagate, and then in, then you just put it into a mold to get it to propagate in the shape you want it to. So I'm thinking, in, in, like this, this is fine, but I'm thinking actually I might change it so that instead of these pulp blocks being just, oh well, what am I trying to say here? I, I think, I think it would be make more th more sense as to the way it actually works if we take these maybe maybe not even a whole lot of it maybe a little bit of this a little bit of this a whole lot of this and water and you get one of these and then from there you basically take four of these more food and water and you get a larger quantity of them something like that i think that would make a bit more sense perhaps although it would mean that you don't need the mushrooms you don't need to farm the mushrooms so yeah i'm yeah we'll leave it like it is for the moment I feel like now, now that I know that this is actually something that you can do in real life, like, that's definitely great, that's definitely a good thing to know, and I, I do like the idea of, of pushing things in the direction of making it more realistic, but at the same time, we do have to make sure that we make it, you know, game balanced and interesting and fun and not too terribly grindy hopefully as, as a matter of fact I'm I'm considering actually upping the number from six that might be that might be better maybe make it eight I don't know I don't know maybe six is enough but like I don't want to push it so far into realistic territory that it kind of becomes just a unfun grind i'm not sure that sure that doing doing that modification that i just spoke about like making it to where you you use these to craft larger numbers more quickly i'm not sure if that's really like that big a deal but at the same time 
I don't feel like that's really that big a deal. I don't I don't know that doing that would be adding all that much to the idea to the recipe. I don't know. If anyone has any thoughts, let me know. I I feel like I, as it is with with just these I feel like that makes sense enough enough that it's um certainly I feel like it works. I didn't actually mention the last part of this recipe, and that is this. To to actually... <laughs> we're doing all this work for a wood substitute, and we haven't actually mentioned the wood substitute part of it. Basically, just... You bake it in the oven. Like, Minecraft furnaces are... Uh, a little weird in the sense that, I mean, you, you shove sand in it and it spits out glass. You shove food in it and it's perfectly cooked. I feel like it it makes perfect sense as far as these things make sense, you know. And and then from there, you know, it's it's just oak wood. And then you go from there, basically. So yeah, there's there's the recipe that that we came up with, where I came up with, and and that's that's the um. That's what the wood substitute is going to be for down here. I think it, I think it makes sense. It sort of kind of works in real life. I, I couldn't find any specific information about exactly what the physical properties of this, of this, of using mycelium like this could be. There, there were mentions of being able to alter the properties to suit what you wanted. But I'm not sure, like, is it, is it something you could substitute for wood actually? I don't know. But at the same time, this is, this is Minecraft. This is fantasy. And, I mean, to be honest, these mushrooms are ginormous. So, like, surely it makes sense that, that, Something that can grow a mushroom like that, the mycelium underground, would sh surely be pretty sturdy, right? At least you'd expect so. So I don't, I don't feel like it's... Even if in real life, mycelium can't actually substitute for wood in, in like, structural strength and such, I feel like it makes perfect sense for these. So... Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm satisfied with that recipe. I'm satisfied with, well, maybe not the recipe, but I'm certainly satisfied with the idea and the basics. I'm, I'm satisfied with this. This, I feel, makes perfect sense. You're, you're firing it to make it inert so that it doesn't keep growing on you. And then you've just basically got a plank of wood or a log of wood that you can then cut down to whatever you want it, want it to be. Additionally, you've probably noticed this recipe that I, that we keep going past. Um, it's because, basically, we have this hyphae from this mod, Fish's Undead Rising, and it's that, and, and it kind of, it, I mean, it makes sense. You've, it's got essentially mycelium that you're mixing into the dirt and you get mycelium dirt blocks like that makes sense to me and like I don't see there being any gameplay problems with giving the player easy access to mycelium if if there is anything you can think of like let me know but I don't think that's really a problem so, yeah, you know, anyway. Now, to move on a little bit from the regular mushrooms, I want to talk about those glow mushrooms. Glow shrooms? Glow... They're glow shrooms, right? These things. Um, we, we, we had kept trying to get them to grow, or to, to, um, whoops. Didn't mean to place two. To grow, to grow large, to bone meal them, and it kept not working, kept not working, and I couldn't figure out why. 
Well, I tried it in creative mode, and it does actually work. Although one thing I will have to point out is this mod, uh, it actually had an update several ver several more more recent versions actually not just a single version update there were there were several i think i uh, i downloaded the new ver newest version for 1.12 and it's like twice the size of what we were using so um that was maybe actually a bad idea now that i think about it but i think this should work I, I, the, the problem is because these are essentially mushrooms, right? And they work similarly to the regular mushrooms, but not quite. I'm not entirely sure I understand the rules. Part of it is actual light level, though. But it's weird because these give off light, so... It's hard to tell where they can be bone mealed. But I had, I had, I, I did some testing and proper testing, and it seemed like on mycelium and podzol it would bone meal just about anywhere. So this should work, and it does not work. Does it need sky access? Maybe. I don't understand. Something I'm not understanding is the fact that these. In my creative testing world, the number is actually different. But I started a new world to see if that was doing anything, and the number was different again. So I don't know if that's anything at all. Maybe it's not. But, like, I don't, I don't understand these things. Because it worked fine letting me bone meal them in creative. I suppose I was always on the surface in those in those creative worlds. So maybe that's the difference. I don't know. It's the only thing I can think of. I, I would really like to use these though because they're really cool looking. I mean these are really cool looking but the actual the big mushrooms are really cool looking too. So, I don't, I, maybe, maybe we'll just have to, I honestly don't know. It's, it's kind of baffling me, to be honest. Wait a minute. Oh. That's, that's a very different thing. Um, hold on. Oh, um. Oh. It's this this new mod I installed. I'm not too sure about that, I'm gonna be honest. Well hmm. I feel like it being this recipe really Well I don't know. Which do you think is more more fair? Because the thing is, in order to get them in large quantities, you do kinda need to use bone meal. But you can just make a regular mushroom farm, so I don't, I don't, I don't know. Hmm. I'm not too terribly sure. Either way, there we have it. Some of these. I suppose, I suppose either one of those recipes could work, I guess. I don't... Eh, eh. I'm not sure how I feel about this one. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, either way, that, that, that is that. At least as far as the mushrooms are concerned in that regard. Now, we've, we've, been talking on and on an awful lot about about the mushrooms but exactly what we're going to do with these is the next question hi there editing alderaunt here um 
yes, we have, in fact, been going on and on about the mushrooms for an awfully long time. Um, here's the thing. My time perception is not all that great, and to be perfectly honest, at the time of recording all this, I didn't really realize just how long I had been talking about the mushrooms. So I carried on with the episode where, frankly, probably should have left it about there, and we ended up doing something like two hours worth of, uh, road block palette brainstorming. Now, I could do an awful lot more aggressive editing, Yes. However, because of the fact that I decided that, well, I'm going to actually bring you through the process and the brainstorming and the thoughts, the whole thought process behind what we're doing and why, well, all, all of that mushroom discussion about the recipes and stuff, I think that's all interesting and valuable, but it's also... At this point, over 40 minutes long, and frankly, all we've done in this episode so far is talk about recipes and how you go about creating things out of mycelium in real life, and that's all very interesting, and I don't want to not include any of this in this episode. But again, at the same time, there is something around about two hours worth of road brainstorming to come. And I also don't want to cut out an awful lot of that. So at the end, when I'm finished editing that, it's probably going to come somewhere around an hour at least. And that would mean that this video, this episode, would be probably close to two hours long in total length. And frankly, that's just too much. I, honestly, hour-long videos are too much for most people. I really need to work at getting these episodes down to more manageable levels, closer to the 30-ish minute mark that I had been going for much of the early episodes of this series. So, instead of editing aggressively and cutting huge swaths of content out that I have already decided I want to include, because again, I want to take you on the process, and part of that process is just throwing blocks down, looking at them, picking them back up again, and saying, nah, and we are going to be doing an awful lot of that. But we're going to be doing an awful lot of that next episode, because I'm breaking this up into two episodes. I've said before that I have an amount of time to play Minecraft and make videos. That amount of time is... well, it's making episodes that are over an hour long. And with this episode, probably over two hours long, and that's just entirely too much. So I am breaking this episode into two. Next episode will be road building brainstorming, pretty much in its entirety. Now that will mean that there are two going to be two Minecraft episodes this week. I don't I haven't decided if that's going to be the way we're going to do it moving forward. Possibly it seems to me that if we end up with, you know, X amount of footage, and I take that and make that into a single episode, it shouldn't be too much extra effort to break that into two episodes. So potentially we might be doing two episodes of Minecraft a week. I don't know. I haven't decided. I really probably need to get better at... Well, again, it's not really time management, it's time awareness. Like, we talked about the mushrooms, and it seemed to me at the time like it was 20-odd minutes of 
of talking about mushrooms, and it was definitely not. So potentially I just really need to get better at being able to keep track of how long we've gone for and how much actual content there is, because I keep track of the elapsed time that I have been recording for, but that doesn't really tell me how much is going to end up in the episode, because there are long stretches where I don't talk, or I'm just doing something random, and I cut out portions of the footage, and I have difficulty, like, in my mind, figuring out how much of the footage I have recorded is going to end up as episode while I'm recording, so I tend to record too much. Either way, whatever we're doing in the future, that's going to be for the future. For right now, this episode... Well, yeah, I think we're done with this episode. It has already gone on way longer than it should have, and so I will say thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. I know it was basically just a long talky episode, but I at least thought that it was all very interesting and something worth talking about, and I hope you enjoyed it. So, I will see you next episode for Road Brainstorming. Until then, take care and farewell.